All right, here's a second law problem that is a little bit more complex, and to see that, we'll, we'll start it. So we have a strong man accelerating a crate. So again, the object being accelerated is a crate, and it is on the ground, and it has a mass of 100 kilograms, so we know the weight is 100 times 10, or 1,000 newtons, and likewise, there'll be a normal force of 1,000 newtons, so those cancel. Um, but the, the guy is able to push this crate. He's using a force of 300 newtons. And there is some force of friction. It says there is, so we, we're going to write that in. But we don't know what it is yet. But we do know that the crate, which again has a mass of 100 kilograms, will accelerate at a rate of 1.2 meters per second squared. And they want to find the frictional force. So this is a situation where you say, okay, well, well, how else can we get this frictional force? And the only way to do that, that we know of right now, is to find the net force. So how do you find the net force? There are two ways. One way is you can add up all the forces on the, on the um, picture and figure out what's left, which we obviously can't do because we don't know the frictional force. But the other way you can find the net force is to use the equation. The net force is equal to the mass times the acceleration. So if this object has a mass of 100 kilograms and it's accelerating at a rate of 1.2 meters per second squared, then the net force is 120 newtons. We just used the equation and calculated it. So we are pushing, or he is pushing with a force of 300 newtons. So how much does the friction have to be to give us a net force of 120 newtons? So in this case, you take the difference between those two and you would come up with 180 newtons. Because if there's 300 newtons to the right and 180 newtons to the left, that would give us a net force of 120. So we're kind of working backwards. Whereas in the last problems, you were given the friction and the applied force, and you were trying to calculate the mass or the acceleration. Here you were given both the mass and the acceleration. And so from that, you can calculate the net force. So it's really just about writing down what you know and then you know, calculating the other things. You know, we weren't given the net force, but we can certainly find it. And so that's the process. Let's do one more. So in this situation, we have a rock, okay, 60 kilograms. So that means the weight is 600 newtons. The mass is 60 kilograms. And there's some air resistance force on it. How much? No idea. So how can we find it? Well, the best way to do it is say, okay, what's the net force? So once again, the net force on this rock equals, um, so it's accelerating at a rate of 7 meters per second squared. And actually, um, I, this really needs to be more clear in the problem. It's my own fault here. Um, we're going to say that's accelerating downward at 7 meters per second squared. This really should be more clear because it could be accelerating upward. So the net force is 7 meters per second squared downward. So that means the mass, 60 kilograms, times 7 meters per second squared. We get the net force is 420 newtons. Um, and so if it's accelerating downward, that means the net force is 420 newtons downward. So that means friction must be um, acting against the 600 to give us the 420. And so how much is the air resistance? It's the difference between them, in this case, 180 newtons. So that would be the force of air resistance. So again, just like the last problem, working backwards and we figure it out. Um, so again, I need to be, the problem should be more clear about which way it's accelerating. Because believe it or not, this object could have been accelerating upward. And you might say, how is that possible? Well. If the objects were slowing down, it could be accelerating upward at 7, in which case the net force would be 420 up. And if you're getting pulled down at 600, the air resistance would have to be enough to overcome the weight plus the 420. So air resistance in that case would have been 1,020. Um, so you actually get a very different answer. So it's kind of interesting. Um, so this is if the rock were actually going so fast that it started to slow down because of the air resistance. Um, notice the air resistance is much larger than in the other case. So two possible answers based on the way this problem was written. Uh, again, it needs to be written more clearly. So uh, anyway, uh, until next time, I am Derek Genova. Have a delightful day.